Welcome to all. I uh, hope you're all keeping well. My name is PJ Reedy, GDA with Kerry Coaching and Games. I'd like to welcome you all here tonight to our seventh in a series of coaching webinars. Um, tonight's webinar will be uh, titled Move Well, Moved Often, Developing the Physically Literate Child in School, Home and the Community. Um, we are delighted that Margaret Foley is going to facilitate tonight's seminar. Margaret, who's a health and wellbeing advisor with the Professional Development Service for Teachers, um, and Margaret supports schools and teachers on the teaching and learning of P curriculum and also facilitates teachers' wellbeing workshops. Um, Margaret is a primary school teacher with 11 years of experience in mainstream classroom teaching, and she's been second to the PDST for Beaumont Girls School Black Rock College for the previous three, three years. Uh, Margaret's originally from Kiel, and um, she has worn the Kerry jersey on several occasions underage, and she's played in many as a county final. And I was only informed today that she's still a tea tough uh, cornerback. So um, we'll be that, that'll be that'll be interesting there. Um, just if you'd like to ask Margaret any question through the webinar, she'll facilitate for you. And Kerry GDA Tom Joy will also do a um, will also have a question and answer session after with Margaret. Um, just to start off there, we'll just go through a bit of housekeeping. Could you please make sure that all your microphones and cameras are off at all times during the um, presentation? Um, and again, any questions you have, feel free to just add it into the chat and Tom and Margaret will, will facilitate you. OK, Margaret, over to you. Hi, PJ. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you all so much uh, for joining um, us here this evening. And thanks a million to the GE for um, inviting me along. Um, I feel so privileged to be here this evening. I suppose um, it gives me an opportunity to share the work uh, that we're currently doing um, in schools with teachers, with pupils, and also the work that we're currently doing at, I suppose, enabling um, PE to be continued on in the home as well. And I suppose also this evening is a great opportunity for um, teachers, coaches to identify maybe how they can both work together, be it when the GA coaches may be coming into the school teaching the um, GA skills or alternatively maybe when the GA coach is working with pupils um, in the GA pitch then looking at skills around hurling and football. So um, what we're going to do this evening is we're going to explore the resource Move Well, Move Often. I don't know if you can see it there on the screen. Some of you might have heard of this resource already. Some of you might be familiar with it. Some of you might be using it in your schools already. Um, but we're going to look at what the resource entails and what it involves. I have a couple of PowerPoint um, slides here. Feel free to jump in with any questions at any stage. I'd be delighted. Um, I suppose I do have a couple of PowerPoints, but at, at the same time, I'd, I'd really love to be answering your questions that you have here this evening around fundamental movement skills and developing the physical literate child. So I'll just share the screen now and we'll pop up to the um, to the slides. Just um, are we all OK there with the slides? Can we all see those? Yep, we're okay with those, are we? Yep, I haven't heard that, that they they can't be seen anyway, so I'll, I'll stay going if that's okay. So basically this evening, it's an introduction to... Just one second there, Margaret. Sorry, no, again, PJ, back to... Could you try yep. that there again? Maybe I, I, it's not coming up on my screen anyway. Just have All a right. Look. Yeah, we'll try again. No problem. Um, hang on, we'll go for it again. And... Yeah, you're good. One second there, no. And have we, is that okay, PJ? Can you see you it there now? It, you had it there just in this, yeah, we have it there now again, yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, lovely. And if there's anything around, anyone can't hear me or can't hear videos at any stage, uh, please just let me know as well. So here this evening, an introduction to physical literacy and move well, move often. So the resource Move Well, Move Often, what it's looking to do is to develop the physical literate pupil through the lens of fundamental movement skills. That all sounds very wordy, I suppose, at the moment, but really, I suppose, we're looking to improve um, children's movement competence. The idea is that if we can teach children, be it down in the GAPH, be it in the P school PE lesson, in the PE yard, that we can teach children to move well now, that they will move more often. And I suppose that's what we all um, want, that we're all kind of have the same aim, be it as we're the GA coach or the teacher teaching the PE lesson. So we're going to fly away through now um, a couple of slides. So this evening, our learning intentions, develop an understanding of physical literacy, 
identify what fundamental movement skills are. I'm well aware that many of you will be aware of what fundamental movement skills are at the moment, but I suppose how these, these fundamental movement skills are a core element of developing the physical literate child and then become familiar with this resource with the PDST physical literacy move while move often resource. I suppose before we go any further my own background as PJ said there earlier I'm a primary school teacher with 11 years ex um, experience of teaching um, in mainstream classes but um, at the moment I'm working with the professional development service for teachers where we um, provide curriculum professional development for teachers and I work on the health and well-being team in the area of um, PE but I've always been extremely passionate and extremely interested in how children move and I suppose how we as teachers can develop um, children's movement skills then as well. So I suppose the good news at the moment is we don't have a new PE curriculum. It's probably on the way over the next couple of years, but suddenly move well, move often. It's not um, replacing our PE curriculum or anything like that. I know many of the GA coaches going to schools, you would probably be very familiar with the games um, strand of the PE curriculum. Uh, the teachers present tonight, you'll all be very familiar with the other six strands, dance, gymnastics, athletics, outdoor and adventure and aquatics as well. And I suppose what we'll be doing looking through this presentation is we'll be looking at how how fundamental movement skills link in with our current primary school PE curriculum as well. So going back to that phrase, um, our term physical literacy, and what is that? Um, I was down in West Cork a couple of years ago giving this um, presentation, presentation similar to this, and after we went through this slide, man put up his hand and he said, Janie Mac, I'm in the wrong place altogether. You know, he said, I thought I was coming here today to learn how uh, we could do more reading and writing with our children. But that's not the case at all with physical literacy. We'll explore now what the definition of physical literacy is. So... Um, the physical literate child can be described as having the motivation and confidence, uh, sorry, having the motivation and confidence, physical competence and knowledge and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life. So I suppose here there's three different kind of areas in developing our physical literate child. And if we look over here to our diagram, our Venn diagram that we see here, and this little yellow happy face inside here, this is ideally what we want our physical literate child to look like. That they've got their movement competence, that they've developed their movement skills and movement patterns. And I suppose true enhanced movement and competence, it enables a child to participate in a wide variety of a physical activity settings, be it that down in the GEP pitch, be it in school in the PE yard, be it in the tennis club, be it in the um, rugby club, be it in uh, gymnastics, or be it just recreational activities, that a child is able to move and able to move in a variety of different ways. We've got then our motivation and confidence. And I suppose this might be something new that we might be thinking of now around um, children and their movement. Often before, I suppose we would have thought about motivation more so as an adult kind of thing. But I suppose it's really, really important. What motivation and confidence is looking at is a child's enthusiasm, enjoyment and self-assurance in adapting physical activity for life. Moving over here, then we have our knowledge and understanding. And I suppose what that is looking at is the children are to identify and express essential qualities that influence movement. Maybe things like understanding tactics, maybe understanding how to use space, maybe understanding how to change up a game or change up an activity. And then I suppose also encompassing that the benefits of being involved in physical activity. And as I said, be it sporting or recreational. And down here then, this is where us, the teachers and coaches, come and involved then to give opportunities for children to engage in physical activities for life. So I suppose this is what we're looking to do with the resource Move Well, Move Often. We're looking to develop the physical literate child. And I suppose this is a lifelong journey. It's not just for the years that our children might be doing PE in school and then playing GA for a couple of years or whatever. We want them, I suppose, to have this love of being physically active right from the word go all the way through their lives 
depending and it doesn't really matter how they're being physically active or what skills they're actually doing, but that they're enjoying it and involved and doing that then as well. And I suppose if we look at here our physical literate child again, you know, you might have a child in your class now or you might have a child that you a uh, child maybe that you know from coaching your teams or that. And you might say, God, you know, he's great, great skill level. He can he can throw his hand kind of in the great all round player, you know, no bother to him at all um, or to her. But maybe what happens maybe to that child if they don't get their own way? What happens if they lose a match? What happens if they miss a score? What happens if they um, feel that they're not progressing or whatever? You know, maybe it's that child's motivation and confidence that might um, need a little bit of work. Similarly, you might have a child then maybe in your class or in your in your teams that might be really enthusiastic. You know, the first down to training every night, the bag full could list every one of the Kerry GA players. But actually, it might be their skill level that might be letting that child down. Might be very motivated now. But how far will this motivation and this knowledge actually carry them if their skill level isn't there? So I suppose really to summarise all that, that it's really important that we're developing these three areas to develop our physical and um, literate pupil. So um, we'll just stay going. I have a short video here. Again, just to summarise again for us, what is physical literacy? We'll hear, he, we'll hear on this video here from Dean Creelers. He, um, he's based over in Canada and he's considered, I suppose, like the godfather or the king of all things physical literacy. I'll just play the video now and I hope the sound, you can let me know um, if the sound or anything isn't OK with it. Physical literacy is a relatively new term that we find is very important for the development of healthy children and a healthy population. Physical literacy can be defined in a variety of ways, but almost all the definitions worldwide are generally coherent in saying a child that is, or a person that is physically literate will have very good motor competence in a wide variety of movements, as well as having confidence, comprehension, and ability to adapt the skills for any environment from being on snow, on ice, in water, on land, indoors or out. So in the end of the day, a physically literate person is a person who has a diverse movement vocabulary. They can do lots of different skills. They can do it in a lot of different environments and they're pretty good at what they do. Of course, if that's true, a physically literate person then can participate in whatever they like. Rest assured, if you can't throw, you won't play baseball. If you can't run, you won't be able to avoid an accident. So it's it's not just for sport that physical literacy exists. It's for physically active leisure time pursuits like recreation. It's for participating in your house and doing different chores. It's for your vocation. It's for performing arts. It's for any aspect of your life. If you're not physically literate, you limit your participation in society. Physical literacy is a vital component to be added to literacy and numeracy to make a healthy child. So I suppose that kind of brings together, concludes together there what we're talking about physical literacy. I'll just pop up one more slide here. Um, and I suppose here research would say that one of the best places to develop the physical literate child is in our PE lesson. And how we can do that is um, teaching a broad and balanced PE curriculum that we're exposing our children to as many different skills and as many different activities um, as possible over their school, their, um, their school life, their eight years in primary primary school. So just kind of to reiterate there again, I suppose we're going to be looking at the Move Well, Move Often resource tonight, and that's looking at how we can develop pupils' movement competence. But again, I suppose with developed, with improved movement competence, that will in turn impact on their motivation and confidence. You know, with improvement competence, research would say that children are more likely to participate in physical activities and having imp improved movement competence will impact on their knowledge and understanding then as well. But I, I suppose in some cases, these other domains would need to be um, focused on then. But for tonight, we're just going to focus on the movement and um, competence. If you are very interested in looking at um, motivation and confidence, there's a section in our website, which I'll show you later, that deals um, with how that can be developed in the primary school setting um, um, as well. 
before we go any further, are there any questions there now that anyone might have that may have appeared in the chat bar? Or is there anything that you're a little bit confused about or wondering about um, at the moment? Uh, hi, Margaret. Yeah, I just have one question for you there. Yeah. Uh, is one domain more important than any other to develop? Yeah, brilliant question. So when we're talking here about our domains, we're talking here about the three um, different circles. So movement competence would be called, would be a domain and then our other two as well. So again, I suppose that it's really, it's really important that all three domains and then our children are given opportunities to develop that as well. But I suppose it kind of really depends on our um, child individually. So um, I suppose once we have an awareness and a background that these is how this is how we're going to develop our physical literate child, that these are the different things before we might have just presumed, do you know what? We'll just focus on the physical side. We'll just focus on developing their skills and sure they'll be grand and sure, of course, they'll want to play and of course, they'll want to get involved. But I suppose now we know that it's really important for a child to participate in physical activity, regardless of that, if that's GA hurling, running, gymnastics, whatever, that we need to work on these two areas then um as well so um so again it, it would really depend on the child but all of these domains are very important are there any other questions or anything there no i think we're good for now thanks margaret no. thank you so now we're going to look at fundamental movement skills. And I know many of you are very, very aware of what fundamental movement skills are. The basic building blocks of movement. Um, uh, I suppose, and these, it's the basic building block, uh, blocks of movement, both for everyday activity and for um, children to participate in um, sporting activities then um, as well. And this is a key area of developing children's movement components that we would develop their fundamental movement skills. We'll just take a look here. The Move Out, Move Often resource looks at 15 different fundamental movement skills. And I know in, in the world in general, there's about over 30 fundamental movement skills. But I suppose when the PDST were designing this resource, they chose the skills that are specifically relevant to Irish children and the games and activities and the recreational activities that children in Ireland would um, be involved in. So first of all, here we have our locomotor skills where we can transport the body in any direction from one point to another. We have walking, running, hopping, skipping, jumping for height, jumping for distance, dodging and sidestepping. And I suppose if we look at these skills just in general for a second, you could see here many of these skills are absolutely vital and the children would be able to perform very well in the uh, to allow them, I suppose, to participate fully in a GA match as well. They'd certainly need running. They might need hopping at times. Jumping for height would be very important. Dodging and maybe even sidestepping there then as well. So I suppose if a child can have a foundation in these skills ever before they go near the GA pitch, they're kind of setting themselves up for success and um, straight away. We have our stability skills then, um, this section where balancing the body in stillness and in motion. And our two skills here are balancing and landing. Again, landing, hugely important for the GA setting as well, that a child would be able to land when they come down from jumping up uh, to catch and retrieve a ball. Uh, balancing as well, be it static balance or the more dynamic balance, I suppose, is probably more suited to the GA context. The dynamic balance is that a child can actually control their body when they're kicking a ball, when they're moving, when they want to catch a ball, that they've got that strength and control in their body. And then we've our manipulative skills then as well, control of objects using various body parts. So we've our catching, throwing, kicking, striking with the hand and striking with an implement. So again, catching, they're very, very important. Throwing, probably not so much. The, re the referee will be calling us if, uh, if we see that we're throwing the ball instead of hand passing it. And even kicking. Some of the teaching points around kicking, I suppose, are important for the GA kick pass um, there as well. Some of them would be more based on the fundamental movement skill of kicking is more based on kicking the ball from the ground. But some of the teaching points would actually translate very well to the GA um, kick pass, upon pass as well. So um, we'll stay going there now if there's not any other questions or anything like that. Um, so I suppose what brought all this upon us? Why um, did the, G the PDST go off and decide to write this resource, Move Well, Move Often? It all came from this. Many of you will be familiar with this document from Healthy Ireland, the Get Active Ireland document, which is part of the National Physical Activity um, Framework. So in this um 
framework, it would have been identified back um, in 2012 that the rates of physical pupil, physical inactivity were increasing in Ireland, that children were not receiving, were not involved in physical activity. Children should be physically active for 60 minutes per day. And I suppose the rates were showing that um, it was very low, the, the rates between 20 and 25 percent of pupils were actually achieving that 60 minutes of physical activity per day. Um, and I suppose the way that I think, would think about that is that, you know, children are children. You know, they're not like us. They don't have the, um, the commitments, the lives, the jobs, the, the different things that we have to do that might impact us from being physically active. And it's nearly a child's job to be physically active and to have an opportunity to experience um, all the benefits that goes with being physically active. If, you, if we think back to our own youth, any, any of us that might have been physically active ourselves when we were younger, you know, all the, the social benefits, the physical benefits and all that we learned, you know, the coping with the winning and the losing and and that so I suppose it's so so important that children are being physically active um a few statistics here then again around I suppose where we are at the moment about child physical um inactivity and that if it, that it's becoming a leading health risk in Ireland the WHO the World Health Organization we're hearing an awful lot about them at the moment are predicting that by the year 2030 which is only 10 years away that 89 percent of Irish men and 85 percent of Irish women will be obese or overweight so and I suppose like our primary school children children who are in second third class now they'll be the turning into adults in 10 years time so it's now's our time to equip them with the skills I suppose so they that they can look after their own well-being and their own self-care as well growing up in Ireland last year would have released these statistics that 22 percent of nine-year-olds are overweight or overbeast um 25 percent of nine-year-olds meet the World Health Organization physical activity requirements so if you think a child of nine you know, you'd wonder what else um, can they be doing when, you know, with, with their time other than being physically active and enjoying themselves and having fun around that goes around that. There, there's many barriers, I suppose, around children being physically um, active today, but 25 percent is a very high statistic around that. Um, then some research here looking at fundamental movement skills and mastery. And I suppose mastery of a skill is that a child is able to move, is that they're able to perform a skill and they're able to apply that skill to the different settings. Irish mastery, private pupils master of an individual fundamental movement skill. Uh, this um, research was conducted up in Athlone IT a couple of years ago that 2.4% of children were able to hop, that they had mastered it. And 35% of children were able to sidestep. Hopping would be considered a hard skill, but only 2.4% of the children assessed were actually able to hop properly. And 35% of the children who were assessed were able to sidestep properly. Again, some of that will be no news to all of us from watching and looking at our pupils that we're working with and, and coaching. Again, here, 11 percent of 12 to 13 year olds perform fundamental movement skills adequately. If you think about that, 12 to 13 year olds, next place they're going is on into, into post primary school when they can often, I suppose, drop out of games, drop out of activities and maybe not have opportunities to develop their fundamental movement skills. So that's why it's so important that we're grabbing our children as soon as they come in the door into our primary schools, onto our GA pitches and that we're working straight away um, looking at their basic fundamental movement skills. Good news over here with we'll C. Interventions using Move Well, Move Often led to a 25% increase in pupil fundamental movement skills. This intervention was carried about in, out above in Dublin, of course. Of course, they're, they're leading away above in Dublin. Um, but interestingly enough, this intervention was a combination of GDA coaches going into schools and working in a partnership with uh, the school class teacher. And both partnerships, the teacher and the um the Gaelic coach coming in, working together, using Move Well, Move Often, and how that actually led over an eight-week period, this intervention was carried out, uh, how that led to a 25% increase in pupil fundamental movement skills. So I suppose that's very inter interesting information for us here tonight, how that we both working together, the GA coach and the um, school teacher, how we are working together and how we can both, uh, with that partnership, lead to pupil uh, fundamental movement skills um, improved um, development in that. Are there any more um, questions or anything there? And I'm aware I'm kind of throwing an awful lot of information out there at the moment. Are there any, is there any more questions or anything there around any of that at the moment? Yeah, I'm back too again, Margaret. Um, Brilliant. 
Keep them coming. When you're, from your own experience, have you seen or heard any of the benefits from teachers developing pupils' fundamental movement skills? Yeah, brilliant question there again, because I suppose we've an awful lot of statistics here. Yeah, absolutely. Anecdotally, I suppose from talking to teachers, my own work with my own kids in my own school and everything like that, you can see, I suppose, with using the Move Well, Move Often programme, and I suppose with working on a fundamental movement skills for a period of time, you can definitely see an improvement in children's movement skills. And I suppose what brings with that is the enjoyment. Um, where teachers would, many teachers would actually say that where they see uh, a huge improvement improvement is children who we mightn't actually consider as our inverted commas, our sporty children. It's our other children who might have been hanging around the fringes who now feel a lot more confident and who feel more equipped with the skills to get involved. And they say that they see children playing more games, being more active out in the yard, that they're taking what they're doing now in the PE lesson, maybe simple games from Move Well Move Often, and they're actually replaying those out in the yard as well. So, so that's absolutely brilliant to hear and to see as well. And the children are taking it upon themselves that they're enjoying these activities so much and they're wanting to learn and they're using those um in their own playgrounds then as well and um, in is that okay there tom yeah perfect thanks very much yeah brilliant we, we stay going so um if that's all right and keep the questions coming so what we're actually going to do now i'm aware that i've been talking about move well move often fundamental movement skills but we're actually going to go and we're going to look in to uh what it what exactly the Move Well, Move Often resource encompasses. So you'll see here on screen, this is the Move Well, Move Often website. And down at the very bottom here, we have the website, skullnet.ie forward slash PDSD forward slash Fizzlit. Many of you might have actually a physical copy of the resource in your school at the moment. Uh, you may not have one in your actual own classroom or the GA coaches, you may not have access to a physical copy, but everything that's in the physical copy is all available online. And I'll show you exactly where to find that now. So I'm just gonna move over into the website now so hopefully now this will all work out well can we see here the Skullnet website up on the screen here now and I'm just scrolling down through it is that okay there yeah Margaret that's up there yeah brilliant Perfect. so when you come in here we have skullnet.ie forward slash pdsc forward slash physical literacy fizzlet easiest way to find this page is google Skullnet google physical literacy and it'll bring you in here so everything, if you have your physical pack in school, um, you these are your three books that you'll have and your teacher guide down here at the very bottom of the web of the home page. I also should have said from the outset that everything in the Move Well, Move Often resource is also available as Gaeilge. So any of you coaching in um Gaeltic areas or Skunna Long Gaeilge or any of you teaching um in Skunna Long Gaeilge or Gaeltic areas, here we have everything as Gaeilge as well, which is absolutely fan fantastic. So there's um our resource. Move well, move often resource. It's come, um, divided over three books. Each book um, has the full 15 fundamental movement skills developed in it. So it really doesn't matter which book that you're using. And because each of the teaching points for each of the skills are exactly the same. The only difference between the three um, books is that book one, book two, book three are progressively developmental. So the activities to go with each skill are going to be easier in book one, a little bit more challenging in two. And then the hardest in book three. So I suppose book one would be aligned towards the junior end of the school, book two, the middle, and book three, the senior end of the school. But um, if you don't have a copy of book one in your school, you just um, are on you there now or whatever, you just click in and it's all available there to download. Here we'll see the contents and you'll see each of our 15 fundamental movement skills are developed out there. Um, I'll go back now. And here we have in our tabs here, we'll go into fundamental movement skills in a, in a second. But before we do that, I would have mentioned motivation and confidence earlier. And there's an awful lot of information and we'll be adding to this area over time as well on how we can develop pupil motivation and confidence, be it in PE or be it in um, our GA setting as well. We have some nice teaching tips there um, around teaching PE and teaching fundamental movement skills. Planning, this will be a very important section for any of you looking to embed Move Well, Move Often into your current PE plan assessment there's great assessment templates um in there as well looking at how we can actually assess our fundamental movement skills beyond the classroom this is the area that we're really developing at the moment and i'll speak more about that soon and we've got some seminar materials in there for any of you we've enrolled four seminars all to do with move well move often uh developing the physical literate child so all materials are covered in there and then down here there's a video 
for each fundamental movement skill. And I'll show you one of those in a couple of seconds as well. I'm going to click in here now to FMS and activities and just pretend here are our 15 different fundamental movement skills down the left hand side. So you're the um, the teacher and the coach, you've decided that you're going to focus on the fundamental movement skill of catching when the coach is coming in um, over maybe the uh, a block of time when the coach will be in school and the teacher will work on this skill as well, maybe in the other PE lesson. So we're clicking here. Everything that you need to teach the fundamental movement skill of catching is inside here in this link. So we've got the a video here. You might play this video um, for your pupils before you go out onto the GA pitch or out onto the, um, the PE yard. Um, in here in teaching, you've got your teaching points. And these, I suppose, are proving to be revolutionary for teachers. These teaching points have broken down the fundamental movement skill of catching, broken it down into the basic components of how we can actually teach um, or how pupils can develop um, this skill. So often, you know, and I suppose this would have been something I would have struggled with myself um, in my when I was teaching um, in my own class. You know, you might have had maybe a group of children, third or fourth kind of class range. And like in every class, You'd have brilliant movers, well able, and then you'd have children who'd be way off the mark altogether and way behind. And you're kind of saying, oh, Jeannie Mac, how am I going to bring these children up? But by actually breaking down the skill and helping them say, right, here's what you do with your hands. Here's what you do with your head. Here's how you can move your legs. And this is what you do and bring them through it slowly. These teaching points are really helping children to understand how to develop a skill. Often, I suppose, before we might have said, are sure children, should they pick those things up from playing around at home and stuff like that, running, jumping? We can't leave anything to trial and error anymore. Some children will develop these skills to trial and error, but we can't assume that all children will. Um, and I suppose to go with these teaching points then as well, we've developed external cues which are available on our website. Again, many of you will be familiar with external cues from your own work, and I suppose what external cues are is putting um these teaching points into child-friendly language and again that a child will have a great um I suppose there'll be um, a child is more likely nearly to remember the, the external cue maybe than sometimes like the word, the wordy teaching point. And just to give you an example of one of them would be um, one here, maybe for our um, the, the the this teaching point here, catch and control the object with the hands only. Um, and I suppose that one there would a nice external cue to go with that one would make keep your shirt clean. We're not going to dirty our shirt with the ball that you were catching with our, our hands only, not bringing it into our chest. So for every for each one of the different fundamental movement skills, we have our teaching points here um, for each skill that breaks it down into the identifiable components of teaching that skill. And what we would work on, it's not a case that we're trying to do all six in one go or whatever, we'd work on one or max two teaching points, depending on our children, um, and what, what it is often with an older with maybe with a senior class you know you might be just working on one or two teaching points over your block of teaching but with a younger class you might need to focus on on each teaching point and you might work on one max two teaching points at a time going back then I'm just going to show you um, a quick clip of the video just so you can see um, what I'm talking about here so um, I'll just press play here and I'll enlarge it here I'll fast forward it on a little bit class or catch. Sarah has mastered the skill of catching. Observe how Sarah prepares for the catch. She steps towards the object, placing her body directly in its flight path and secures a wide base of support. Her hands reach out to meet the object, and her eyes are focused on the object throughout the catch. Now observe how Sarah receives the catch. Her fingers and hands are relaxed and slightly cupped to receive the object. She catches and controls the object with her hands only, and notice how her elbows bend at least 90 degrees to absorb the impact. From the front, you can see how Sarah's arms give in contact with the object to absorb force. Um, so those um, teaching points there 
um, will say, and we have in that video, then we have a child in that there's three areas that children move to when they're developing a skill. They're exploring, they're starting out, they're getting used to it. They're developing, they're improving, and then they're mastering, they have it. So in the video, we see examples of each of the three children, which is really good for children um, to see as well. That it's not a case of that I go out the first day and that I'm brilliant, that this takes time and this is a process. And, and I suppose with time, with effort, with practice, that we will improve with our skills. Um, moving on further down then, the good news is we've eight different really good, really fun activities for our children to play then and um, that the teacher or coach can choose from that um, eight from book one, eight different ones from book two and eight different ones from book three all around catching and that we can give our children opportunities to practice and they're catching within actually a really fun game as well. I'll just click into one here, catch if you can. There's a brief description of our activity, some variations, how to make the game a little bit easier, a little bit harder, the equipment needed, some tips, an activity that they can do at home that night to continue on their practice and then some frosty gilga down at the very bottom then. Um, I'm going to go back out of here now because I want to show you. Um, so there are those activities, those teaching points, coaches, teachers, you might find those really, really helpful in helping you uh, when you're working with children and developing their fundamental movement skills. And the activities, children and teachers are absolutely raving about the real, really good activities that are in these packs. And the children are loving getting involved in those activities as well and really helping to develop their skills. I'm going to bring you to this section now, the Beyond the classroom. This is the section that we have really busily been working on since, I suppose, school closure. And what we're looking at in the Beyond the Classroom is we've developed a series of three videos um, and a guide to go with each video for each of the fundamental movement skills. I'll scroll down here to, um, we look at the skill of dodging, and um, I'll just show you a brief part of this clip. What we've done here is these, uh, the ideas behind these videos is that there's a warm up, there's a focus on a fundamental movement or a teaching point of a fundamental movement skill. There's a home practice activity, there's a home challenge, and there's a PE, a kind of a reflective activity for children to do in their PE journal. And the idea is that teachers can share these videos with their pupils now so that children can continue on to develop their fundamental movement skills and their PE while the schools are closed, while the GA pitch is closed, while they're not meeting their GA coach coming into schools, that they can still continue to develop their skills. And the idea is, I suppose, this is definitely for now, but also how that we can move it on then. And when we hopefully return to schools in September, that we can start beginning to assign our pupils maybe homework so if we're um, working in the, if we're developing the fundamental movement skill of dodging, that then we can assign our pupils um, the, one of these activities maybe to do at home by night then. And, and these are all, all videos and all um, guides are available as as well. Just click in here to dodging, uh, just so you can see an example of one here. I'll just fast forward us the classroom dodging videos. We're going to begin with our warm up called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, dodge. We're simply going to travel to the stone, and when we come to the stone, we're going to dodge around it. We're going to run for five strides. We're going to skip for four. I'll just fast forward on there slightly again. And we're also going to use our left hand side to dodge. Today's dodging home practice activity is to play a game of musical statues. So you see there from that video, I suppose that it's very easy for children then to be physically active and I suppose in their own homes. All these, we've designed these activities in such a way that they make it very easy for children um, to be active at home, regardless of equipment um, or space that they have at, at home. And I suppose that that's um, how we can share with children to be physically active at home um, for now. And I know the G are putting out really, really good skill challenges and videos. Uh, I know in our own club here in Kiel, and they're doing great work as well. And that's absolutely fantastic to see. But maybe now we could look to extend maybe other skills like running, jumping, um, dodging, sidestepping, balancing, etc. And how the children could develop those maybe while they're at home as well. Um, what we're going to do now, I'm really aware of, of the time. Um, and 
there we go. I'm just going to skip on here. And um, I suppose I have a couple of slides there on, you know, where teachers can kind of go. And I suppose just to kind of finish it all up, but I suppose if we can work as a partnership, teacher, external facilitator, external coach coming in, and we're all working together to um, develop our PE lesson, all the research would state that when the class teacher and the, the coach can work together to develop people's fundamental movement skills, to develop people's PE lessons, that that is the most richest environment for the pupils uh, for the PE lesson then as well. And I suppose that the teacher and coach can work together and I suppose the teacher can continue on then maybe um, in the next lesson or so then what may have been introduced and I suppose that the teacher and coach are working together and working in a partnership with each, each other coach learning from the teacher teacher learning from the coach and that's the best partnership that we can kind of work on so maybe in, in future going forwards maybe you know uh, teacher might say look um, we're working on this skill this week or this month or this block of six weeks here are our teaching points we're just going to focus on this one for this session if that's all right and you know we'll, we'll work away then together um, at doing that so that that, that would be um, that my advice around how both partners can can work in that area. Um, just to finish off then, if you would like any in for more information around using mobile, move often developing the physical literate child, go to the skullnet.e forward slash pdst forward slash fizzlit um, website that I just brought you to there earlier. Uh, the pdst.ie forward slash um, PE is, has loads of resources and ideas on the teaching of PE there as well. Um, the PDST, we provide in-school support. Obviously, that's on hold at the moment, but it will be reopening again. Um, in the new academic year and what that actually means is that we can come out we can come out to your school and we can do lesson modeling we can look at your PE plan we can have crow park sessions exactly like with the content that we went in there did there and I suppose it brings everyone up to speed and we can look at then about how we can work about embedding fundamental movement skills into your PE plan and that all teachers in the school would be doing the same thing and that maybe we'll say when the coaches are coming in then as well that we're all kind of singing from the same hymn sheet I would really advise you if you're on Twitter give PDST um, PE page a follow um, we put up all our new resources, all new ideas, all workshops, seminars, everything to do with PE in Ireland um, is all advertised there. If you would like to purchase the Move While Move Often resource, if you said the website is gorgeous and all that, but I'd love a, a, a one in my own hand, uh, go on to Leash Education Centre website and under publications, you'll be able to buy the resource there for 30 euros. Um, so that's very good value there as well. But uh, purchase on the website. They don't like getting calls up there in Leash Education Centre. So um, if there's any more, we might move to the Q&A session now. Um, if there's any more, I'm just going to stop sharing the slides here there again if there are any questions or anything like that that may have come in there uh, during the the presentation i'm back again margaret How are you? great uh, great thanks very much for that we got a lot out of it there was a lot of information a lot of information this put out there are and i'm conscious of that there might have been maybe an awful lot of information to take in in kind of 40 minutes or that but i suppose it gives um a, a flavor of what's happening at the moment within schools and, and what can happen i suppose as well yeah i know i found it brilliant because you covered both for coaches and the teachers point of view so you you facilitated everyone but a few questions came in there through the chat box yeah uh, one question there is there any plans for a resource for play school kids because they find when they're coming in that they can't sit or stand for any kind of length of time. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, and I suppose our remit at the moment, um, my first answer is all that I can say is that from our point of view, from the PDST, we're our work is to support primary schools um, from the age, from infants right up to sixth class. But that's a really good, um, it's a really good food for thought, I suppose. Um, I suppose it would be kind of the um, NCCA there and Ashter maybe and that who might be able to, to work on that. But from our setting, definitely not. We wouldn't be working with primary or sorry, with um, with play schools, but really, really good um, place to start thinking, especially about the fundamental movement skills. But definitely maybe play school and um, teachers and that could begin to start looking at the fundamental move, move well, move often program and see what part of that may be very small, small stages could be in, um, implemented in that setting. So well done even for uh, thinking along those lines. Perfect. I suppose another question there. 
a lot of people kind of use, I suppose, it's a bit of an excuse when they get home and stuff and they're on about equipment. I don't mm -hmm. have equipment to do it. Your resources seem to show like everything can be done without stuff that's done at home, daily use stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose we were really, really conscious of that when we were designing this Beyond the Classroom um, resource. And this is an ongoing thing, the Beyond the Classroom. Uh, we're, we're making up videos every single week constantly and we won't stop until we've all 15 skills um, uploaded. But yeah, and I suppose what we're doing in our videos as well is we're actually saying, you know, if you don't have this at home, if you don't have bean bags at home, make one, you know, very, very easily. Take a sock and fill it up with, with um, a few grains of rice and tie it at the top. And uh, we're giving plenty of different options because we're conscious not everyone is going to have uh you know fabulous pe equipment or whatever but at the same time we don't want that to let it be a barrier and i suppose some children won't let it to be let it be a barrier but we're conscious to include lots of different uh types of equipment in the in the videos then as well so we would feel that that would be really important we would feel yeah so perfect i suppose we'll just take finish on one last question i suppose for perfect. the schools itself any advice on resources that could be very useful for schools and teachers especially yeah i suppose the first place that i would say would be the the move well move often resource um then i suppose you're probably talking about equipment um then and i suppose you kind of have to it it really differs from school to school depending on your budgets depending on what your priorities are but i suppose if you're looking at maybe bringing in something like using um developing fundamental movement skills across your whole school you know maybe it is that you could go to the to the principal and say look at you know, we're looking at this now. It's a whole school initiative. You know, it's really going to help with child activity. You know, you might be going working on the active flag or something like that at the same time and saying, look, are there a few euros um, there that we could actually invest and invest properly now? And I suppose if you were going to your principal um, with a hard case for this and saying, look, at, here's our plan. Here's how we plan to roll it out. Here's how we can see we do it. I've done this CPD or whatever. And, you know, this is exactly what we need. And again, the Move Well, Move Often resource has been designed in a way that is very light in equipment as well so you know if you kind of have the usual the cones or the spot markers balls bats small balls you should be you should be okay and I suppose that's the beauty of the GE coaches coming in as well that they bring equipment with them as well so that we can kind of say look at we'll definitely do that now when the GE coach is coming in because he or she will bring that equipment with them as well so I would definitely say um go to your principal and definitely ask to see and the board of management as well and i know local shops local areas can sometimes be very good local businesses uh, can be very good to sponsor equipment and that um at times as well and i know kind of um other areas you know you might see um a good equipment on on discount and things like that as well um i know some sports partnerships that they might give out um kind of maybe um well, what would I say, maybe um, uh, vouchers and different things that they might have funding going maybe. So it might be no hard to check in with your local sports partnership as well, just to see if there is anything uh, going around um, money funding to, to purchase equipment. Just one thing there, Margaret, um, just one thing before you go. Um, you mentioned there in your presentation about, you know, this, this especially now with, 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 with in the last few months there, you know, the kids and parents are really getting involved at home. Um, yeah. And you said like that this is important that we continue this even when we do go back actively yeah. in clubs yeah. and in schools that we just don't rely on a structured session by the clubs or the the teachers that this has to be done at home as well you know in terms of continuing yeah. continuous um on their own and as you said about equipment you, you in, in the in the skills that you put up there all you were using was was was, was a stone and stuff like that you know um but that's vital too isn't it yeah absolutely and i suppose like Again, if we think back to when we were younger, you know, imagine the hours that we spent out, you know, passing your, practicing your kicking, practicing your catching, practicing all that, and the fun that went with that. We know ourselves in the PE lesson, we've only an hour a week for PE in school. And um, I suppose that that can often get eroded then with, di with different things going on or whatever. And the same with down in the GA pitch, you know, you, you might see your pupil, your children coming into GA pitch, maybe for max an hour, maybe a week, maybe not even that at sometimes. And you know, by time everything's set up, by time 
teams are picked and all that, that are you actually active for an hour? So that's why it's so, so, so important that children are, I suppose, encouraged, inspired, that they are led and um, to be physically active at home as well. And I suppose you, you, we're really wanting, I suppose, parents to see the value in their children being active. And I suppose if the parents kind of say, God, well done, you know, sure, come on out now, we'll, we'll, we'll play around, we'll have a, a game of thing or whatever ourselves as well here, you know, it's adding to that enjoyment. And then going back to developing child's physical activity levels, raising that up then as well. And I suppose it's it's um that everyone is getting involved in this in this physical literacy journey. That it's not a case of sure look at they do that below inside in the GA picture, they do that above in the in the PE yard. You know that this is everyone is a stakeholder um, involved in in developing this. Perfect. I suppose that's that's all the questions we have for you now. So I'm Great. Carry Kerry Coaching Games, I want to thank you for your time and I'm sure all the people, coaches and logged in found it very useful and I suppose the big thing is we have the session recorded now and it'll be available to everyone that logged in and it'll be on the Kerry Coaching Games YouTube page so again we want to thank you Margaret for your time and thanks to all the coaches and see you again soon. One small thing that I might just include there before I go, uh, and thank you very much as well. Um, really, really, really enjoyed the session. And if anyone has any questions, Margaret Foley at pdst.ie is my own email address, and or even uh, shoot a question there on our uh, PDSCPE Twitter page. I'll be keeping an eye to that if you want to send um, a private message in there or that or whatever. And I'd be delighted to help out um, in any way that we possibly can. And I wish everyone the best. Um, I mean, we're all, we all have the same intentions. We all want the best for our children and that they're all moving and enjoying their movement then as well. And I suppose keeping that going, what we want is keeping them going for life then. So uh, we're all singing from the, the same hem sheet. So well done everyone. And I wish everyone the best uh, with their work as well. Thanks, Margaret. Perfect. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, Take care. I might, I might share your email address so on the chat bar here. So all the coaches, yeah. if they have any questions, they might be able to, yeah, yeah. Again, Margaret Foley at M A R G A R E T F O L E Y at P D S T dot I E. Perfect. Thanks very much, Margaret. Thank you. Take care. Thanks a million.